we're just normal theater kids, and we've always been normal theater kids. We're weird, and we like singing and dancing, and doing all the weird stuff that theater kids like doing. A part of me like wants to go back to being a normal teenager again. But I just feel like, how can you go back when all of this is happening? about theater, just the fact that for a little while, like, you can be someone you're not. I could do, I could be Jewish for you. I haven't sang this in forever. Should I act it for you? Yes, Give you a little show? Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. It's very good. I'll admit it's a little bit out of the blue, but I might as well try. I think I could be Jewish for you. I'll stop baking gingerbread, start baking challah. I've been in over 20 shows. I usually do, like, four shows a year because I would do one show in the spring, one show in the fall, and then two over the summer. And I've been doing that for a while. <laughs> I wanted Sora to be an athlete, and we knew that we had an issue because every time she'd hit the ball and go run to first base, she would blow kisses and wave to everyone in the bleachers. <laughs> there was a lot of spinning involved yeah. in, in her sports. <laughs> All right, let's start. From the beginning of Act One. Yes. Place it. I think it was like late December, early January. I learned that a local theater company was putting on Spring Awakening. It was a book written in the 1890s and then was turned into a musical. It was a big hit on Broadway and won like eight Tony Awards. One last. I think a lot of teenagers are drawn to Spring Awakening because we're all so angsty and hormonal that we just kind of relate to it. Oh, this is my opening number costume. I'm in my nightgown, feeling my boobs, you. you know, normal everyday girl stuff. Mama who bought me, mama who gave me no way to handle things who made me so sad. In January, I cast Cameron and Sawyer and all of these students of Marjorie Stoneham Douglas in these leading roles. Sawyer, yes. you have buttons up the back of your dress. I do indeed. Great, okay. Me so. and Cameron and Ethan and Kirsten, like we all decided to do it. There's only powder left. So good. They're the worst kind. <laughs> and then Alex joined in later on. I'm playing the role of Venla, and Cameron is playing Melchior. I'm also not taking an AP review, so I can come in at 9 a.m. Oh, okay, 11.30 to 11. Because I'm not a good student. Yeah. When I met Cameron, he was just this kid who had a lot in him. You know, I, I describe him as like a, an overly court champagne bottle that was just waiting for its opportunity. Cameron, I want you to look Jason dead in the eyes. Like you would say 5,000 things, but you're just not going to yet. Do I kiss him? No. After the show. And then just calmly sit down, go back into the scene. Once Cameron is set, then start. Do you have any idea of what you're saying, Air If you please. Pardon me. If you please, Air Sonic Stitch. The boy has made an error. Yes, sir, but an understandable error. Well, you know, Spring Awakening is a lot about young people paying for the negligence and uh, dishonesty of their elders. Air Gabor, do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. When we started rehearsing, we had no idea how much it would connect with what we were about to go through. Yeah. 
units in District 15, possible shots fired at 5901 Pine Island Road at Stoneman Douglas High School. Possible shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School. 1784, we definitely have shots being fired. 10, 4 Kilo 23, there is an active shooter working at Douglas. Multiple gunshots are being fired. We can hear them in the background. Our 911 lines are blowing up. We're locking down the school right now. Make sure there's no pedestrian traffic anywhere on Old Road. We were around the Walmart area. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's very hard to retrace the day. <laughs> there were about 60 of them that were in a uh, closet together. We just were texting her, just pretend you're dead. Just pretend. to think that I was literally losing my kids. It's terrifying. Parkland consistently voted one of the safest communities in America until today. 17 people are now confirmed dead. We know at least three people still in critical condition. It was just such a dark time, and it seemed like, how are we ever going to move forward from this? Like, like there's no way to go forward. people are converging on the nation's capital right now to demand action on gun reform. Hi, my name is Sawyer. My name is Andrea. And we are survivors from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, and we also wrote the song, Shy. We're done with all your little games. We're tired of hearing that we're too young to ever make a change. They wrote an anthem for what was going on, and it spoke to everybody. It's how everybody was feeling. Like, yeah, we're pissed, but we're going to prove you wrong, and we are going to make changes, and you can't stop us. We're not going to let you in. We're putting up a fight. It's hard because I want to help in every way I can, but I also, I'm still a teenager. I still go to school. I just want to be like a normal kid and just living my normal life but we have to talk about it like it's something we can't ignore because it happened. Someone who isn't even allowed to buy alcohol legally is allowed to buy a war weapon? Like, where does that make sense? This is the only country where this kind of thing happens. This is something that can be stopped, and this is something that will be stopped. Theater kids have always been taught to express their voice, take the message that they have inside and exude it to everybody else. Senator Rubio, can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? teenagers, you've been through hell and back, whether it's because you were, you know, went through it at the school or you've been through it holding down the fort or you're going through normal teenage shit and it has nothing to do with what happened in February. I understand. We got back after everything happened. It was about two weeks later and we were just all thinking like, are we even going to do this show anymore? Like, should we do the show? Can we even do the show? It's good to be back in the room with all of you. And I'm incredibly grateful for those of you who have been juggling the world that you have prioritized the show. But I think we all unanimously felt like, yeah, we have to do the show because we need this show now more than ever. Wait, for the last time, did, did you, you write, write this? this? Yes! Yeah, your thoughts all right. And of course, now I have to sorry. Right now. 
when we all agreed to continue doing the show, that's the moment that I was most proud of the kids, frankly, because they knew they were going to be tackling something that was so close to home. To put your hand like on her grave, right? And just be like holding it like you're holding her. She's down there. Unfortunately, I don't need to direct you through this mm -hmm. moment too much. There's one scene in a graveyard, and we're all mourning the loss of our friend. It's good to have that sense of reality, going to rehearsals and just being a normal teenager and realizing, okay, this is what normal is. And then, in a way, it kind of hasn't because it, every night, every time we perform the show, it just kind of cuts open those wounds that you're trying to heal. Yes, I'm ready now. I'll be an angel. So dark, so dark. Okay, take a moment. At that point, you're gonna take the gun, you'll put it into your mouth with your eyes just straight out at the audience, okay? And you'll pull the image of pulling the trigger. We are negotiating use of a gunshot or not, okay? No decision has been officially made. It's been hard to watch them give up their innocence. It's such a provoking show. Like, there's topics that people feel uncomfortable talking about. But I think overall, like, it's very important that we do it because it's what we need it right now, especially now. Thank you. It's a lot of energy. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. This is here. This is here. You guys, let's circle up. Yeah, circles. Yeah. Friends. We have friends to welcome into our circle here. Hello. This is Stephen and Duncan, and they are here to support us. So this is our cast and some of our crew. We're thrilled to be here. It's Thank a real you. honor to be here. When I learned that six of the students, including a couple who were so um, involved in Never Again, were, were part of a production of Spring Awakening, I was deeply moved. It felt like something had really come full circle in my own life. Thank Have you ever seen the show? <laughs> it's a little racy for me. <laughs> I wrote the play very much in reaction to Columbine. What I felt in the wake of those terrible shootings was how much we were still failing to listen to what was going on in the hearts of our children. We're still not hearing. Duncan and I had this dream, and we made this um, determination in 1999 to touch the troubled heart of youth around the world. And I mean, I think we just never would have had any idea that the show could have the kind of resonance it's had and kind of enduring life that it has. Duncan. For Sawyer, just being in theater is healing. It's doing what she loves and being on stage, and that's her escape. Her closest next to normal that yeah, she can find. Yeah, exactly. Hello, I'm picking up two tickets. Yeah. Our phones are ringing off the hook. We sold out the first show very quickly. The second show sold out. We had to add a third, and that sold out in one day, and we just put a fourth show on. It has made this community come together and show their support. My name is Christine Barkley, and I'm the owner and artistic director of Barkley Performing Arts. Thank you. Thank you. We picked this show in January, far before any of our community struggles that we have recently suffered together. The incredible bravery of the students and the cast members and my company members 
that has gone into producing and making sure that this show happened tonight is something astounding. That being said, there were some disclaimers that were posted that there would be a gunshot in the show. And I am here to tell you that as a creative team, we have decided that there will not be a gunshot in the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Spring Awakening. This whole entire play is about kids speaking up against adults who are trying to hold us back. There are so many adults telling us that we're not going to make a change because we're teenagers. The reality is that we are what is going to make the world different.